Fighters of the 95th Airborne Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces have prevented an attack by the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Army in Russia's Kursk region. The invaders, who attacked with dozens of armored vehicles near the forest strip and the lake, were struck by artillery and drones. As a result, at least 28 military equipment and more than 100 servicemen were destroyed, hundreds of servicemen were injured. The surviving invaders tried to escape by fleeing from the battlefield. A recent failed Russian assault northeast of Sivesk, near Bilohorivka, prompted outrage from some Russian ultra-nationalist mill bloggers over Russian command failures and the pervasive Russian military culture of exaggerating battlefield successes. Russian z -War correspondents are already blaming the Russian Defense Ministry command for this, which allowed major losses during the offensive in the Bilohorivka area. Russian war correspondents claim that the commander of the 123rd Motorized Brigade gave the order to the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Motorized Battalions, as well as the 4th Tank Battalion, to conduct a frontal attack on the Ukrainian Armed Forces positions in the Bilohorivka area. ISW analysts gave a description of those events. The offensive was launched on November the 2nd, when the enemy, without adequate fire support, advanced on the positions of Ukrainian forces. Z-War correspondents emphasized that the offensive itself was not only unsuccessful, but also led to large losses in both personnel and military equipment. Russian war correspondents have once again repeated their criticism that the main thing for the command is to create beautiful reports for the Russian Ministry of Defense, attaching to them false maps with achievements on the battlefield. Field commanders send false reports to the Russian Ministry of Defense in order to secure promotions at the expense of the lives of Russian military personnel. The Russian Ministry of Defense had claimed in late October 2024 that Russian forces had seized Serebrianka just west of Bilohorivka and Russian mill bloggers may have been referring to this claim in their critiques. Bilohorivka is a particular sore spot for the Russian ultranationalist community because Russian forces have impaled themselves on assaults to take the settlement since at least May 2022. The Russian military command most notably launched a catastrophic river crossing to take Bilohorivka in May 2022 that failed 
resulting in significant Russian armored vehicle losses. ISW recently observed elements of the 5th Motorized Rifle Brigade fighting in the Kurakov direction. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian deputy commander of the sniper platoon of the 88th Hispaniola Volunteer Brigade, Pavel Alexandrovich Apalkov, nicknamed Joker, was killed in combat in the Chasiv Yar direction. The newly elected U.S. President Donald Trump is already shaping the country's policy on the main directions, Ukraine and Israel. This was reported by Bloomberg. With phone calls to the leaders of both nations, and another expected with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump's victory, and the possibility he will seek major policy changes, is reverberating in both countries and well beyond. One former Trump administration official, who asked not to be identified discussing private assessments, said the president-elect will have an immediate head start thanks to the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. U.S. adversaries may change their behavior in advance, the person said, some deterred by the threat of U.S. retaliation, and others seeking to exploit their remaining leverage before President Joe Biden leaves office. That's being felt most acutely in Ukraine. Trump promised during the campaign to solve the Ukraine crisis before Inauguration Day, and President Volodymyr Zelensky is already scrambling to catch up. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk was in the room for Zelensky's call with Trump this week, according to a person familiar with the matter. Musk has previously advocated for a negotiated solution in which Ukraine gives up some of its territory. Trump's election has changed the Ukrainian rhetoric and planning in their views about negotiations, said Shelby Majid, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Majid said Ukraine is moving in the direction, knowing that Trump has won, of accepting that negotiations are a reality. A former Trump administration official told the publication that the elected president will benefit from the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. According to the publication, the authorities of this country are beginning to realize the inevitability of negotiations. Trump is expected to pursue a policy of reluctance in the fight for territories occupied by Russia. Israel, however, will benefit the most from Trump's presidency. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a longtime ally of Trump. Trump has already publicly stated that he will give Israel more freedom to prepare possible strikes on Iran especially if Tehran decides to change its nuclear concept, the publication noted. The fact of an electoral result is itself reassuring for some countries, which were preparing for either outcome but unable or unwilling to move forward without knowing who would lead the US and in what direction.